Higher education is our next topic on Illinois Lawmakers, and our guest is Republican State Senator Chapin Rose of Muhammad, whom we often call on for his expertise in the higher education field. Good to have you on the program. Thanks for having me, Jack. Appreciate it. Um, the governor's budget proposal called for higher ed to receive uh, something like $2.5 billion in fiscal year 2025, uh, an increase of around $24 million for universities and um, another $6 million more for community colleges. Is that pretty much in line with what we're hearing now? So let's correct a couple of things. The, the governor's increase on paper for the just operational expenses is about a 2% increase, except for the University of Illinois, which is about 1.8. The problem is he cut another uh, several other line items elsewhere, like for example, mental health treatment. Uh, universities and community colleges are receiving mental health reimbursements for the cost of mental health treatment of their students. When you factor that, those cuts into the overall pie, uh, many universities end up actually getting cut. So for example, Eastern in my district was receiving less than, got about 4.6, 4.7% cut. Uh, U of I got cut. Uh, et cetera, when you look at the entire package, not just the GRF increases for base operations. So there's been some trade-offs made. Yeah, I mean, basically what they did is they cut things like mental health treatment to show an increase to the base operations. Um, you know, that's not exactly a, an actual increase to higher education as a whole. What about the monetary award program? That was- Yeah, that, that's, yeah that was increased, absolutely. Um, one of the things that, of course, we've been talking about for years around here is, you know, how uh, the House and Senate came together back in 2017 to re uh, reform the way that we uh, fund uh, K through 12 schools in the state of Illinois. We're now looking at that uh, at the state university level. Could you give us some insights into that and the, yeah. how that goes? So if you go back in time, myself and Danny Brady, Representative Brady, Representative ISU, we were the initial fire, uh, filed a bill years ago to come up with a formula for higher education. And, and really, we need a formula for higher education. That goal remains. There was a lot of good work done by co a commission over the summer to give us some suggestions, but there's also some very problematic things in that. You know, if depending on what university you're at, um, <clears throat> you know, for example, uh, Urbana would potentially have its foundation counted against it. Uh, on one part of that proposal, uh, they could lose about $80 million off the top simply because they have a foundation. Well, Jack, you, you and I both know that foundations are great to have, but they're usually restricted dollars. In other words, someone's giving a gift, you know, in the name of their mother for an English scholarship. She's not giving it as a gift to underwrite a, a medical school at the University of Chicago, right? So just because you have a foundation doesn't mean you can just go do whatever you want with it. Uh, SIU raised, the president of SIU uh, system raised this as a real concern. There's other concerns, frankly, um, of a constitutional nature. Uh, they um, have a piece in there where the, the recruitment of an, of an African-American student, for example, they'd get a $500 uh, uh, bonus, but the recruitment of a Latino student would get a $1,000 bonus. Well, what century is this exactly, right? So, you know, talk about equal protection under the Constitution. There's some serious concerns with, with how that lays out. Now, Again, let's restate, higher education needs a funding formula. We need to do, as you noted, the same thing we've done for K-12, but it's not ready to go yet. And this commission has met, it's given us some, some really good suggestions. It's some things that need to be looked at and fine tuned. We just discussed a couple of them. Here's another one for the research ones. There's really no, um, there's no accounting for a research one status in the, in the formula that commission proposed. So for example, SIU, uh, gets penalized for having a dental school. Uh, the University of Illinois gets penalized for having a dental and medical school, you know, those types of things. So, um, you know, those programs are very costly to put on, and there's really no accounting for that in, in their plan. Um, one other thing that I want to get to, we've got about a minute left, and that is universities are expecting to see a big fall off in enrollment as much as 15% over the next four years starting next year. How are Illinois schools uh, lined up to deal with that? Yeah, well, look, that's the enrollment cliff, and that's why things like AIM High scholarship program that I authored, it was my idea, and then the higher education work group came forward and, and helped support getting that across the finish line. That helps us retract and keep and retain the best and the brightest in our state. But I'm telling you right now, this is a huge problem. It's not just Illinois, it's the whole country. I mean, that 15% enrollment cliff is gonna hit, it's gonna hit the whole country. And I, I don't think higher education as a whole anywhere is positioned for it. I think everyone's staring at, 
at a problem coming at them and they're all hoping it goes away and it's not gonna go away. And so like something like 875,000 students nationwide. Senator Rose, thanks so much for your, your time and expertise. Thanks for having us, Jack.